So thanks for being here, everyone. And that concludes another successful quarterly planning meeting. Hey, Nick, I just noticed no one turned on the recording. The meeting wasn't set to record automatically. I must have forgotten to update that setting when I sent out the meeting. Why can't teams just make this easier? The fact is that in the age of AI, meeting recordings and transcripts are increasingly important assets. And while Microsoft does offer some tools to help you automatically record individual meetings or to turn on recording for certain meeting templates, there is still no easy way to just tell Teams you want to record every single meeting you set up. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can work around this issue and truly automate the recording of every meeting you have in Teams. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I advise smaller businesses on how to get the best from AI, including Microsoft's AI technologies. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. On the face of it, automatically recording meetings feels like something that should be easy to get set up. And I've spoken to numerous Teams users who feel like they're just missing something super simple when they raise this as a problem. After all, there are an astonishing number of options and settings under the hood of Teams. And surely one of these, or a combination of them, is the key to get this done. If you create your Teams meetings using the classic calendar in Teams, then making sure you get the meeting recorded is fairly straightforward. By default, an options pane opens alongside your meeting creation dialog, and you can just turn on recording. However, if you use the new calendar experience, which is better in almost every way, it does take one big step back. That pane disappears, and you have to remember to click into meeting options to find it hidden amongst a whole bunch of settings. Same too if you create or modify a Teams meeting using Outlook. Recording is hidden in the meeting setting experience. It's really easy to forget to click this option when it's hidden, and even having it right there each time you create a meeting using the classic calendar isn't foolproof. Not to mention if you use another service like Bookings or Calendly to allow others to self-service create meetings on your calendar, then you never see any of these dialogues unless you purposefully go in and modify each meeting. But as an admin, surely you can change the default here and make meetings recalled unless the option is turned off. Well, in meeting policies, you can enable or disable recording options. For example, you could set a policy to prevent any meeting from being recorded but you cannot enforce that recording must be enabled for every single meeting. You could do this with meeting templates, but this feature is only available if you have Teams Premium for the meeting organizer. You cannot modify the default template, so it still doesn't change the standard behavior if someone doesn't remember to use the template. And frankly, templates aren't well surfaced under the new experience calendar in Teams anyway. I'm not aware of any other settings surfaced in the Teams Admin Center or via the PowerShell management modules to allow you to achieve a blanket state of turning recording on for every meeting. There are complex enterprise-wide mechanisms to enable recording of all calls and meetings for compliance purposes, but these do not create a standard meeting recording that can be shared or that generates a post-meeting summary. These are simply to have a compliance record. So what's the solution? A third-party app? Well, one possible solution is to use Microsoft's inbuilt automation engine, Power Automate, to automatically update created meetings to turn recording on. However, in Power Automate, neither the Microsoft 365 Outlook nor Teams connectors have an inbuilt action to make this type of modification to a calendar event. However, if we dig into the documentation, we can find that the setting of whether a meeting auto records or not is manageable via the Graph API. However, it doesn't sit within the calendar events records related to your Outlook calendar. This setting actually exists within a different entity, an online meetings record, which contains all the settings related to how your team's meetings work. However, like so many capabilities in the Graph API, Microsoft has provided us with no ability to manipulate this endpoint using the connectors it has built for Power Automate. We're going to have to do this ourselves. If you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd hit the like button and leave a comment to help it get in front of more interested people. Also, if you'd like to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. The resulting Power Automate flow is actually visually pretty simple with only a few steps. This triggers when an event is created in the user's calendar. 
It checks that the new event is both a Teams meeting and that the organizer is the user who's running the flow. And if that's the case, then it just updates the meeting record to flag it for auto recording. However, there are several wrinkles to getting this done. As, as I've stated, the connectors and actions Microsoft provides for the Outlook calendar and for Teams give you no ability to make this change. So we have to work out how to get to the correct record and make the change directly using the Graph API. My preferred approach to working with Graph API endpoints that aren't exposed in the existing connectors in Power Automate is to build a custom connector. You can also do it by using an HTTP request action and passing an authentication token in your headers, but I find this a far more complex to think about technique than just building a reusable connector that offers the tools I need to simply access the feature from Power Automate. I will look at the connector option, but you can always use the HTTP request option if you want. But before you consider either of these approaches, it's important to think about what tools you actually need to get the job done. The online meeting object that is associated with each team's meeting is an entirely different record to that of an Outlook calendar event object you can see here. And as is so often the case with Microsoft's APIs, despite these two records essentially representing different aspects of the same thing, there is very little between them to tie them together. In fact, the event ID is entirely separate to the online meeting ID, and there is nothing in either record that directly references the other. You will find that there is one visible property that seems to link the two, and that is the join URL for the Teams meeting. So we would use that for the basis of matching an Outlook calendar event to an online meeting record. With that worked out, we also need the capability to update an online meeting record to turn on auto-recording. And as you can see here, there's an update action we can take where we can post the changed or updated information to the Graph API. So our custom connector ends up looking something like this, with two actions, one to find the related online meeting and one to update it. You could of course easily build this into a capability to manage more aspects of online meeting records, but that's beyond the scope of this video. In fact, I'm not gonna to dwell too much on making a custom connector, as I've featured that in videos before, which I'll link down below. The connector itself needs to be set up with an Azure app registration that gives it access to the online meetings read write graph API permission in order to work. I am trying something new with this video. Often in the past, some of you have asked for more granular detail on these types of tutorials. So I've added a written overview to my website to give you more information. And if you choose to, you can even select to get the full instructions and files to download with the Power Automate Flow and Custom Connector. These are tools to help your learning, exploration and personal productivity rather than business ready solutions. But I've been asked for more information so often, I thought it would be good to find a suitable approach to this. So check out the link down in the description to find out more and access these resources. Building the flow itself is pretty simple. We start with a trigger for every time a calendar event is created and point this towards the user's default calendar. We then want to restrict this flow to only run if two conditions are true. One, we want to only focus on Teams meetings as shown by the meeting location. And we only want meetings where the user running the flow is the organizer. Parameters for both location and organizer are passed to the flow via the trigger. But first we need to get the user's UPN or email address and we can do this by using the get my profile action from the Microsoft 365 users connector. We then create a condition and the conditions will be that we want the meeting organizer as shown on the event record to equal the UPN shown from the Microsoft 365 users my profile action and we want the location from the event to equal Microsoft Teams meeting. To be fair, there might be a more elegant way to do this that would avoid this failing if the user modifies that default location, but for most purposes this is going to get the job done. If the condition doesn't match, let's terminate the flow run, we'll just cancel it as the condition doesn't apply. We want to add some minimal error handling here, so let's put what happens next in a scope. A scope essentially allows us to run a bunch of actions as a single pass or fail transaction and then handle what happens if they don't run as one single follow-up. First, 
I need to get the full event record from the Outlook calendar. The inbuilt get event action doesn't actually grab all the attributes that are available through graph. So instead, I'll use the Outlook HTTP request action to grab the endpoint me slash event, then the ID of the event as presented from the trigger. You may wonder, well, if you can get that information from the graph API using that action, why don't we just go to the lengths of creating a custom connector? And that's because despite Microsoft giving us actions in many connectors that can send requests directly to the Graph API, they are locked down to certain endpoints. And Microsoft does not, to my knowledge, expose one that has access to the online meeting endpoint we need. For the full event record, we're interested in the WebJoin URL and we'll use our custom connector action to find the online meeting record using a filter on the join web URL property using that information from our event response from Graph. Anytime we filter in this way, the response is going to be an array rather than an object because that filtering step might return multiple events. However, we know that the join URL will be a unique property for a single event we are searching for. So we can ignore the fact that the structure of the response is built so that more than one object can be returned. In this case, we're solely interested in changing the auto record property of the returned online meeting ID. And we can get that ID by passing the action, the ID property of record zero of the array that was passed back from the search for the related online meeting record. And with that, we've built the functionality that's needed to automate this process. We can add some really simplistic error handling by terminating the app on failure, but obviously you could add some kind of logging or alert here if you needed to. The only thing left to touch on is licensing. Any approach like this requires premium licensing for Power Automate. There's just no way around that. And unless you deal with a very small number of meetings, pay as you go just isn't going to be economical for this option. My wish is that Microsoft would make this easier and give us some access to those Teams meeting records or transcripts or whatever you need from the connectors that they publish. But at this time, that isn't the case. And so you have to go to Power Automate Premium. But there you have it. So long as you have that Power Automate Premium license, it actually isn't that hard to set up a situation where any meeting you create is going to be set to auto record. And this is something that you could publish around your business so that different users do this or people who are setting up a lot of meetings have this set up for them so that all of those meetings get auto recorded. Um, but there you go. That's all I have to say on, on this topic today. Hopefully that's been useful to you and a useful tutorial. As I said earlier on, if you are interested in finding out more about this, I have put together some written notes as well so you can get more granular detail than you can from the video recording. Um, but hopefully that was useful to you. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.